السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر زاہدہ پروین پی ایچ ڈی اسپیشل ایجوکیشن اینڈ ورکنگ ایز اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر آف اسپیشل ایجوکیشن ایٹ یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لور مال کیمپس لاہور دس از دا کورس آف ٹیچنگ آف میتھمیٹکس ٹو ویژولی امپیئرڈ چلڈرن اینڈ دس کورس بلانگس ٹو ماسٹرز ان اسپیشل ایجوکیشن ود این ایریا آف اسپیشلائزیشن آف ویژول امپیئرمنٹ The course code is SPED4137 and its credit hours are 3. The title of today's lesson is Cognitive Theories. While discussing Cognitive Theories, we will discuss two important approaches towards cognition. First one is Piaget's Theory and the other one is Information Processing Approach. First of all, we will discuss what is the impact of visual impairment on cognitive development. Visually impaired individuals are all very different. The degree of impairment, personality, intelligence, background and the presence of other disabilities all have varying effects. So these are the major factors which can affect the uh, among these degree of impairment. like uh, mild visually impaired mild to moderate and severe to profound or profound visual impairment can uh, differently affect the cognitive abilities of visually impaired children similarly personality can affect intelligence and background uh, and the presence of other disabilities can also affect for instance cognitive ability will affect the ability to conceptualize the environment in the absence or reduction of visual inf- information definitely the students with visual impairment lack in the uh, conceptualizing the environment because they have limited visual information or no in visual information to jab visual information hi maujood nahi hogi blind bachon ke paas تو وہ اس انوائرمنٹ کو کنسپچولائز کرنے میں انہیں بہت زیادہ پرابلمس کو فیس کرنا پڑتا ہے اور ان کی جو کوگنیٹو ابلٹی ہے وہ افیکٹ ہوتی ہے ایز اے ریزلٹ ٹیمپرامنٹ اینڈ پرسنل کیریکٹرسٹکس مے فیسلیٹیٹ اور انٹرفیئر ود اڈیپٹیو ٹاسکس کیونکہ دوسری پرسنالٹی کیریکٹرسٹکس جو ہیں دوسرے نمبر پر وہ بھی بہت افیکٹ کر رہی ہوتی ہیں ایز اے ویژولی امپیئرڈ چائلڈ گروز اولڈر آل دو اکوٹی مے ریمین کانسٹینٹ visual function seems to improve as they gradually learn how to use the residual vision more because with the passage of time jab bacche jo hain wo us apni disability ke sath grow up hote hain to wo uske used to ho chuke hote hain unke consequences ke aur wo apne visual function ko improve karte hain because wo environment ko adapt kar lete hain aur uske accordingly apni more accurately wo cheezon ko adapt karte hain As far as uh, theory of uh, Piaget and uh, information processing approach is concerned, you have already studied in previous lectures and previous courses mein, in dono theories ko detail se padh chuke hain, uh, in detail, especially in the course of human development. So, uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, mein, uh, let's watch a video uh, to more elaborate the, these two approaches. for this video is prepared by dr k arokia and uh, she is talking about the cognitive development and uh, particularly these two approaches uh, like piaget's theory and information processing approach so let's watch the video Hi everybody, happy to meet you again with an interesting and much needed domain of development, cognitive development. Have you ever wondered how you had made sense of this amazing multifaceted world as a child, at present as an adolescent or a youth? You constantly explore, analyze and integrate the stimulus all around you and thereby found to possess an inquisitive mix of fantasy, common sense, interpretation 
and reasoning. Do not you? Your thinking has been actively constructed at various levels by your intellectual capacities as an infant, as a child, as an adolescent and as an adult. This module explains the two major theories of cognitive development namely Piaget's cognitive approach and information processing approach in order to clear all your confusions of how you had organized your thinking in your early years and how this thinking changed from one stage of your lifespan to the other stage. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the children's complexity of thinking during their early years as proposed by two major cognitive theories, namely Piaget's cognitive theory and information, information processing approach and realize the implication of these cognitive approaches towards learning and earlier setting in such a way that it could assist the learners to take up the responsibility of providing children with needed opportunities. But before getting into the cognitive approaches, it is imperative to understand what cognition is. Cognition refers to the inner processes and products of the mind that lead to knowing. It includes all mental activity such as attending, remembering, symbolizing, categorizing, planning, reasoning, problem solving, creating and fantasizing. Now, let us get into the first cognitive theory proposed by Jean Piaget. With a biology background, Jean Piaget became a cognitive theorist by observing his own three children. He presumed that every child born in this world acquires the knowledge of their environment, be in terms of exploring, discovering and even constructing the stimulus through his or her own activities. He also found that their thinking systematically changes from one point of their development to the other. But how does it change? As per Jean Piaget, the development of thinking and its active construction is made possible by five processes as shown here. The first one is schemas, then adaptation through assimilation and accommodation, and then organization. The last one is equilibration, equilibrium and disequilibrium sets in. Let me facilitate you to understand these processes with a simple example of how every child and even you for that matter have had learned the concept of a dog and a cat in your early years. The child starts constructing a schema about dog from a picture book and comes to a conclusion that dog has two ears, four legs and a tail. Hence, schemas refers to as the basic building blocks of thinking. They are specific psychological structures helping a child to organize the ways of making sense of experience. Now the child looks a dog in the park and observes it. He experiences disequilibrium as a schema does not include barking and the furry nature of dogs. This cognitive conflict or discomfort experienced while constructing schema is called disequilibrium. By his mother's reinforcement, the child adds two more traits to the already formed schema that the dog is furry and barks. That is, assimilation had taken place by resolving the disequilibrium and the child gets to a state of equilibrium. Hence, assimilation refers to the process of adding new concept to the already learnt concept. And cognitive equilibrium is a comfortable state of the child in learning things. After some days, the child sees a cat walking around. The child looks into the checklist of dog schema and confirms certain traits like two ears, four legs, tail and furry nature of dog and addresses a cat as doggy. 
But the mother tells him, no baby, this is cat. As it sounds, meow and not bow bow. Now the child gets into a state of disequilibrium and starts to construct meaning by getting help from the parent. After which, the child constructs a new schema of cat which says, a cat has got two ears, four legs, tail, furry and sounds meow. Once a disequilibrium is resolved by forming a new perfect schema of cats, the child gets back to the state of equilibrium. That is, the process of accommodation has occurred. Accommodation refers to a process of revising the learned concept to fit the new information received. So, a child would experience a state of cognitive discomfort or disequilibrium just before each assimilation and accommodation and return back to equilibrium once assimilation and accommodation had occurred. The entire process of constructing schema for a dog and later for a cat leads to a higher order cognitive system called organization. Thus, organization refers to the internal rearrangement of schemas and exploring the links and associations between the schemas to develop a strongly interconnected cognitive system. Hope you would have understood the process of cognition with this example. Then let us move on to the stages of cognitive development. According to Piaget, individuals go through four stages of cognitive development as a result of the above mentioned cognitive process. The four stages are sensory motor stage which starts even before birth until extends till two years and the second one is pre-operational stage initiates at the second year of the baby and extends up to seven years. The third one is concrete operational stage from seventh year to the 11 years of the child and the formal operational stage beyond 11 years. Before detailing you about the stages of cognitive development, let me discuss the features of Piaget's stages. Each stage is a structured whole. In other words, the stages are qualitative within the schemas and quantitative between schemas. Each stage is a continuation of previous stage. In other words, every stage prepares and leads the individual to the next stage that is no going back. The stages follow an invariant sequence and none of the stages could be skipped. Irrespective of other variables, the stages are universal since it characterizes children everywhere. Cognitive changes progress gradually from one stage to the other. As the paper on the whole is about children in their early years, this module would focus on only the first two stages of Piaget's cognitive development. The first one is sensory motor stage. It extends over the first two years of life. Piaget assumed that toddlers explore the environment with their senses and motor skills. Hence, the first stage of cognitive development is termed as sensory motor stage. Piaget observed his own children and found drastic advance in their thinking skills every day in general and in their first two years in particular. Hence, he divided this stage into six substages as shown to you in this slide and each of these substages would be explained to you in detail. The first stage is simple reflexes. It's the first stage and it is formed during the first month of life. Piaget considered reflexive behavior as a building blocks of intelligence. After few days of birth, the infant is formed to produce the same reflexive behavior in the absence of the usual stimulus. For example, a newborn initially sucks the nipple or bottle only when placed on its mouth directly. Later, the infant starts sucking when the stimulus is present nearby. Hence, it is understood that the infant has started to structure its experience. Second stage is primary circular reaction. Between one and four months of age, 
the infant's motor activities are centered on its own body. That is why it is called primary circular reaction. The activities that initially occurred by chance are produced repeatedly. For example, an infant sucks its thumb by chance initially. Later, he searches for the thumb and tries to even put a part of his hand into the mouth due to poor coordination. Also, the second substage is crucial in establishing first habits. The third substage is secondary circular reaction, which develops between 4 and 8 months of age. In this stage, infants become more focused on the environment. Their motor activity involves environmental stimulus rather than self. Gradually, they begin to intentionally repeat an action in order to trigger a response around them. For example, an infant picking up a toy purposefully and putting it in his mouth or shaking a rattle again and again to hear the sound. Though the infant of this stage repeats certain activities, the schemas are not intentional or goal directed. The fourth substage is coordination of secondary circular reaction. This substage extends from 8 to 12 months of age. Here, coordination of vision and manual actions occur. The actions become more intentional and goal directed. For example, a baby absorbs a toy carefully and dismantles it. Also, during the substage, the infant starts developing imitation. Hence, their activities become intentional, deliberately changing schemas to fit an absorbed action. For example, a toddler stirring something with a spoon watching his mother do it. The fifth substage is tertiary circular reaction. Between 12 to 18 months of age, the infant will be able to intentionally explore new outcomes or variations as they become familiar by the properties of the object. For example, infant dropping an object from stairs on walls, on air, etc. as it provokes various outcomes. Piaget also concluded that this stage sets a beginning to the creativity and novelty of any human being. The last substage is mental representation. Towards the end of the sensory motor stage, that is from 18 to 24 months of age, the infant possesses the ability to represent objects mentally by using primitive symbols. The use of these symbols helps them to solve their problems suddenly without even trial and error behavior. For example, an infant playing with a toy car absorbs a car being stuck against the wall and suddenly lifts the car and turns it to a new direction. Along with these features, there are certain other capacities that are developed among kids in the first two years. Let us see a few of them in this lesson, namely object permanence, deferred imitation and make-believe play. Object permanence is an understanding that an object exists even when not present. Object permanence awareness gets initiated during the fourth stage of the sensory motor stage. The first sequence with which the awareness of object permanence occur is A, not B search error and the second is accurate A, B search. In the first sequence, A, not B search error. An infant watches an object being moved from place A to place B and continues to search for it in the same place A. In other words, the toddler is unable to possess the image of the object when hidden. By 18 months, the toddler searches various possible locations to find a hidden object. Now, watch this video. Here, the child shows the capacity of mentally representing the ball even when not found. First, searches in a place where it fell, but when cannot find it, searches on all sides and finally locates. 
the second feature is deferred imitation. During the sixth substage of sensory motor stage, the mental representation permits the ability to copy the behavior of others even when not present. For example, a toddler showing love on a doll by patting, feeding or kissing it just like a mother doing for the baby or even acting as a doctor as shown to you. The third feature is make believe play. An infant at the end of the sixth stage engages in make believe play rather than functional play. Functional play refers to the pleasant motor activity of infants and toddlers either with or without objects. Make believe play otherwise called as pretend play is where the toddler act out everyday activities. For example, a toddler pretending to go to sleep. Now, let us look into the second stage of cognition as Piaget had proposed the pre-operational stage. This stage spans two to seven years of life. The ability to represent things mentally rapidly increases at this stage, though the thought is not logical. But what is meant by the term operation in pre-operational? Operations are nothing but mental actions that follow certain logical rules. However, pre-operational indicates that the children at this stage are rigid in their thinking, influenced by only one feature and limits to that situation and hence they are capable of operations. So, what are the operations that develop during this stage? Let me explain to you one by one. First one is egocentrism. This is a concept that is a characteristic of this stage and a very important concept. The term ego refers to self-centered, but it doesn't mean selfish. But the children believe that everyone around them thinks, feels, perceives things as the same way as they do. Piaget proved the development of this concept through a demonstration called Three Mountain Problem, wherein a child was made to stand on one side of a display of three mountains of different heights arranged on a table. A doll was made to sit on the other side. The child was allowed to go around the mountain display after which he is asked to pick up a photograph from a pile of photos to show how the mountain would appear from the doll's direction. The child will for sure pick up a photograph demonstrating his own point of view. Have you any time observed a kid nodding his or her head in response to a telephonic conversation? This is nothing but egocentrism. The next is animistic thinking. This concept of egocentrism develops animistic thinking among preschoolers. It is an assumption that every object they see has life, thoughts, feelings as they possess. Putting in simpler way, it is giving human characteristics to even inanimate things. For example, talking to a doll, hitting the object that hit him. I hope you would have heard certain animistic statements uttered by a preschooler such as, the sun goes to bed because it is tired. Even a child looks at a hole in the tree and says, didn't the tree cry when the hole was made? The next feature is, transductive reasoning. Have you ever heard a child saying, the cloud moves when I walk? Here the two disconnected facts are connected. Even when asked, do the clouds move when you sleep? The child confidently says, yes, because the dogs and cats move around. This is nothing but transductive reasoning. It is an amazing capacity that the preschooler processes, wherein they could connect disconnected facts and contradictions by linking two events that occur close to each other either by space or time. Piaget 
who described children in terms of what they can also to a large extent explained in terms of what they cannot. In that line, three major inabilities that a preschooler goes through at this stage but develops in the succeeding stages are inability to conserve, irreversibility and inability to classify things in a hierarchical fashion. Inability to conserve. The realization that certain physical characteristics of an object does not change even when there is an observable change in their outward appearance is called conservation. The task of conservation involves number, length, mass, liquid and weight. For example, young children have trouble in understanding that the same amount of liquid poured into containers of different shapes remains the same. The preschooler's inability to conserve characterizes another concept called centration among them. Centration is an idea of focusing on only one feature of a situation, neglecting others. Here, in this example, the focus point is only the height of the container and liquid. The second inability is irreversibility. It refers to the inability of a preschooler to reverse direction. This is because of the reason that they cannot follow the series of steps that allows them to return back to the starting point. For example, a child will be able to answer the question of what is 2 plus 3 as 5, but cannot understand the reverse of this equation. The third inability is the inability to classify things hierarchically. The illogical thinking of the preschooler do not allow them to possess the capability of organizing objects as per their classes or subclasses based on the similarities and differences. For example, when a preschooler is showed 16 flowers of which most of them are blue and asked to answer the following question, whether there are more blue flowers or more flowers. They would confidently choose the first choice of more blue flowers. The reason behind is their inability to think apart from whole class of flowers to the subclass of yellow and blue flowers and back again. Now, after looking into the two stages of cognitive development, it is imperative to realize its application, particularly in the field of early learning. Piaget's cognitive theory has got three major educational implications for children in their early years. These implications just focus on what the teacher or caretaker or the facilitator of every child should do. The first one is discovery learning. Piaget believed that every child acquires knowledge by directly acting on the environment. So, the settings of the home or school environment should be in such a way that it provides wide opportunities for them to discover things for themselves by natural contact with the surrounding. The second major implication is that do not impose new skills unless a child has a readiness to learn. Piaget stresses on the level of thinking of a child at various ages and he also argues that unless a child is ready to learn a particular skill, he or she should not be imposed on it because that becomes just a superficial memorization rather than a deeper understanding. The third implication is that every teacher should understand that the individual differences exist. Though all children go through the similar series of development, the rate varies from child to child. Hence, children in their early years are to be provided with ample opportunities for development without enforcing them to learn. After realizing the importance of Piaget's cognitive theory in our children's education, it is time to have an insight into the next major cognitive approach that is information processing. This approach, just like Piaget, supports the idea that every child is active and inquiring by nature. 
This approach also views that mind is a computer wherein information from outside is taken in by encoding and stored in symbolic form by various other internal processes like recoding or decoding in such a way that the individual is facilitated to make sense of their experiences out of the information received. The most accepted store model of information processing was proposed by Richard Atkinson and Richard Schifrin. According to this store model, each human mind has got three major parts as shown here. The first one is sensory register and the second one is the working or short term memory. Third one is long term memory. Now let us understand how these three parts works through the flowchart to be shown to you. Any information that enters to the human mind gets into the sensory registrar but cannot be retained for long. For example, when looking into an image around you for a moment and closing your eyes after that, it is not possible to remember the image for a longer time unless you take up certain deliberate strategies to remember it. Then comes the working or short term memory. This is referred to as the conscious part of human mind. Certain amount of information can be stored and processed actively in this part of mental system. For example, certain memory strategies such as association or organization or repetition of items or the image will be adopted by us to remember that particular lot of image or Im items. The third way station to the human mind is referred as long term memory. It is a permanent knowledge base. All the information entering into the human mind is shelved based on the content, much like books shelved in the library. As the capacity of long term memory is limitless, the major problem encountered is a retrieval of information. Hence, novel strategies has to be adopted to retrieve a piece of information from the long term memory to the second way station, that is the short term memory for active processing. As I told you, the human mind should use control process or mental strategies at every level of their mental system in order to increase the efficiency in their thinking ability as well as retaining the same for further processing and reference. The three commonly used major strategies are attention, memory and metacognition. Now let us see each of these control process. The first one is attention. Very familiar word, isn't it? Attention is a base to human thinking mechanisms as it is the foremost strategy that determines the extent of information to be fed into the mind. I am sure you would have observed very young children in their infancy and toddlerhood stage have got minimum attention span and are distracted very easily. However, during early and middle childhood, their span of attention improves drastically. In their infancy stage, the child just focuses on novel and stimulating events. Then during toddlerhood, the goal directed behavior increases and thereby their attention span improves gradually. However, by the end of the early childhood period, their attention span extends up to 7 minutes. It is also said that by the end of the sixth year, Planful attention sets in, though not matured. The next strategy is memory, which is really a tough task for all of us amid so much of distractions, alright? But you must understand that memory is very important mental strategy to keep our thinking system alive. This particular strategy emerges during the preschool years, but improves drastically during the middle childhood. The language skills gained during the early childhood years also aid in memory of preschoolers. Putting in simple words, mental activities that are carried out deliberately to improve the likelihood of remembering is called memory strategies. Any information that you receive should be stored and then retrieved when needed. The three major ways of storing information is by 
rehearsal which is a repeating scheme of information to oneself. The second is organization that refers to the grouping of related items in the information. Third one is elaboration, the process of creating relationship between two or more information. Hence, the information fed passes on from sensory register to short term memory and then to long term memory through these storage strategies and shelved in the long term memory. After which, it has to be retrieved at some point of time, which is again possible by three ways namely, recognition, recall, and reconstruction. Recognition is a strategy of realizing that an information just received is similar to the one previously experienced. Recall refers to the capacity to generate a mental representation of an absent stimulus. Reconstruction is an information is said to be reconstructed by adding or condensing or integrating the stored information. The third is metacognition. It is defined as the awareness and understanding of various aspects of thought. The strategy starts during early childhood and expands greatly in the middle childhood just like memory. The two major facets of metacognition experienced by children in their early years are mind reading and what it means to think. Mind reading involves the ability to detect their own as well as others feelings or desires etc. What it means to think is a facet that allows a child to aim at certain realizations such as the word umbrella. The child might think it is too big for me to pronounce, I would syllabify and then pronounce. This is how metacognition takes place. Now, after knowing the concept of information processing approach, I could really hear your mind voice reading. But how could the theory on information processing be applied to children of early years in their learning process? Am I right? Hear the situation and realize the answer. Arun is reading a book. In other words, information from outside enters into a sensory register in the form of a book. While reading, the size and shape of the letters, the grouping of words into sentences and even how the page looks when taken as a whole get registered in Arun's mental system. While continuing reading, Arun could remember only certain information that he read a few seconds ago because the information from the book had gone into the short term of working memory. As you know, the storage capacity of the working memory is much limited. However, if everything goes rightly, the information already received by Arun would be pushed into the long term memory and has a chance of getting access to it later. Therefore, the information has moved from the sensory to short term or working memory and then to long term memory. So, how a teacher could apply this approach to help their children learn? For this, first and foremost, a teacher should recognize that many children face problems in pushing the information from short term to long term memory. Cognitive load is a term used for having too much of information in the short term memory of a human mind. This cognitive load does not allow the child to remember anything for that matter. So, in order to help the children to pass the acquired information to the long term memory, certain strategies had to be adopted by teachers. Few of them are encourage attention and rehearsal. When a child is able to be attentive, the likeliness of the information being sent to long term memory increases. Also, Rehearsing certain facts helps them to store information. So, do encourage children to be more attentive and rehearse the stored information. The second thing is present only a few things at a time. As you know and had experienced, when too many things are taught or fed at a time, the working memory exceeds its capacity and does not allow the children to remember anything. Hence, Time should be given them for the child to pass the learned information to the long term memory. The third one is provide information in chunks. 
Nobody could remember a 10 digit number say 9843114463 at a stretch. However, when this number is split into chunks like 9843114463 and pronounced, it is easy to remember. This process helps a child to unload the cognitive load and thereby facilitating them to pass on the information into the long term memory. On the whole, Piaget in his cognitive theory had explained of how schemas change over the different stages of development in general and the first two stages, sensory motor and pre-operational in particular. Also the theory describes the changes that happens in the domain of cognition from sensory motor to pre-operational level and makes you realize the limitations of thinking among children during their early years. The educational principles that have been derived from Piaget's theory namely learning through discovery, identifying readiness to learn and realization of the individual differences had also been discussed. Also, the general model of information processing through sensory register, short term memory and long term memory had been discussed elaborately. The changes that take place in the control process or mental strategies like memory, attention and metacognition were also traced in this module. Though the information processing approach had not completely explained about the thinking process of children, it could have provided you certain tips of how to deal children in their early years with reference to their cognitive development. With this input, I am Aurokya Marai Chelvi signing off for today and hoping to meet you with the next model of information. Thank you.